Hi, I'm Tiffany Jernigan, and I'm a developer advocate at VMware. You can find me on Twitter at Tiffany J. In this video, we're going to talk about getting started with Cube Apps. So, what is Cube Apps? Cube Apps is a web based user interface for deploying and managing applications, which are packaged using the Kubernetes Package Manager Helm in Kubernetes clusters. There are a few links below if you are unfamiliar with any of these products. So before we actually begin, there are a few things that you need to have set up on your machines. So first, you need a working Kubernetes cluster. And in this video, we'll be using Docker Desktop, but you don't have to. You'll need Helm 2.14 or above. I'll be using Helm 3. And you'll need kubectl. So feel free to take a screenshot of this if you need to look at it a bit later. All right. Now let's go to kubeapps.com. So this is the main page for kubeapps. In order to get to the getting started guide that we'll be using today, all you have to do is click the get started button. Okay, so here we are. These are the prerequisites that I mentioned already. So let's make sure that we actually have everything working. So if you've never used Docker desktop before, you'll actually need to enable Kubernetes first. So on a Mac, you can go and click the Docker logo, click Preferences, go to Kubernetes, and then click the button for Enable Kubernetes, which will then spin up a single node cluster. To check whether we have Helm and kubectl installed, we can just do Helm version. And we see 312, so Helm 3. You can do kubectl version. All right, cool. And then if we want to ensure that our cluster is up and running, we can do kubectl get nodes. OK, great. So we have our single node, and it's ready. OK, so now what we need to do is we need to install Cube apps itself. So I'll just clear for now. All right, so we'll be using Helm also to install Cube apps. So if you do Helm repo add bitnami, we have the bitnami chart. We will then do a kubectl create namespace for cube apps because in Helm 3, it does not create the namespace for you. And then we'll do a Helm install for cube apps in the cube apps namespace that we just created. And since we're using Helm 3, we'll have another variable that we need to set. So we need to set use Helm 3 to be true. And then you just hit enter. And this will take a little bit of time as it installs. So while it's doing that, let's take a look at the next thing we have to do. So in order to access our Cube Apps dashboard, we need to have permissions, and therefore we need an API token. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to create a service account and give that service account a cluster role binding. In our case, we'll be giving it a cluster admin cluster role which is not suggested to be used in production. We're just using it for the sake of this demo. So first, let's just go and look here. There's a bunch of things that have been spit out. If you go down to one, you can click copy the port forward. And this will port forward to, so that you can reach the dashboard on localhost at port 8080. So if we put that here. If we go to localhost 8080, takes us to the dashboard. And here is the check that is asking for that token. So now let's go and create that token. So if we go back, take a look here at the getting started. So what you can do is kubectl create service account cube apps operator, create the cluster role binding, and give it the permissions it needs. All right, cool. So we created that. Now we actually need to go and get the token. So to do that, we can use kubectl get secret, and it would be doing this on the new service cat that we just created. So we do kubectl get secret. All right, and then if we hit enter, we'll have a nice long key here. So if we go copy that, paste it here in the API token, and then click login. Okay, great, so we have now made it to the cube apps dashboard. So you can see applications that you have running here. Currently, we don't have any since this is the first time that we've set up Cube Apps. There's a catalog in which you can peruse through many existing Helm charts. So you can click on that. 
their service instances, which is an alpha, and then this is with integration with service catalog. So what we're going to focus on is just the regular catalog. We can either go back to catalog or we can go back to the home page and click quality app. So in this case, we're going to use WordPress. So WordPress. All right, cool. So this shows the chart information for the WordPress Helm chart. So all we have to do is click deploy. All right, so it gives you an auto-generated name. You can use it as you can use whatever you want there, but if you want to be able to tell what it is later, it's better to give it something a little more specific. So I could try WordPress blog. There is this form and it auto populates from this values YAML chart here. So you can go and change any of the values as you wish there, or if you want, you can do it in a slightly simpler form using the form. I am going to just change blog to Tiffany's blog. And if you click changes, you can see what has ended up changing here with the, the name for the WordPress blog. So we go back here. All we have to do is just go and click submit. Okay, cool. So now you can see it says the status here where it says not ready and that there are zero pods available. If you put your cursor over it, you can see the two workloads and the number of pods in those. So if we went over here and we did kubectl get pods, you can see that these are the two pods that it's talking about on this dashboard. You can also look down at the bottom of the dashboard and you can see the deployments, stateful sets and services and a bunch of other resources that are being used in this Helm chart. So now you can see that there's one pod ready. So if you check here again, you can see that they are both saying the same thing. So after it becomes ready, which you just did now, you can access your WordPress blog by either going and clicking localhost here, which is being done as a service load balancer, or you can actually get the IP that you would need and copy this section here in the notes. It's basically getting the service IP for your service and then using that to get the WordPress URL and the admin URL. And this admin URL is the page that you would log into in order to update your blog. And as one would expect, it's localhost here. So what we can do is we can either copy that or we can just go and click it from our dashboard right here. So now you can see Tiffany's blog. So now if I want to go and actually log in to it and make any edits, I would need to go to admin. So if we go back here, you may have seen earlier that this had a username option. So that was user. We had left password blank so that it would auto generate it for us. So what we can do here is we can copy this and paste it, or you can get the password as well by clicking the I next to WordPress password and you can see that they're the same thing. So we can just go and copy that, go back here, type user and password. And then here we go. Now you are in your WordPress admin account and you can go and add more posts and do anything that you wish with it. If this was the extent of what you wanted to do with it, you can go back to your dashboard. You can do an option of upgrade this allows you to go and change any of the values that you had set. You could go back or you could just go and delete it. So with delete, you have an option to purge the release. So if you're familiar with using Helm 2 or Helm 3, with Helm 2, it would, automatic, it would require you to put a flag to purge. What it does when purging is it purges the history. If you don't purge the history of your Helm chart, Basically, if you try creating another installation use of an application using the same name and the same namespace, it will fail saying that already exists. And in Helm 3, by default, per it'll do a purge. So I'll just go here and click Purge Release and click Delete. So now if I do Helm List, you can see that I don't have anything there. If you want to play around with and see what's exactly happening under the hood with cube apps, you can also go here to namespace 
and then click cube apps. And just like we we're looking at it with the WordPress app, you can click on cube apps here. You can see what the pods are and a lot of the details of what's going on there. If you decided that you are done with WordPress, I mean, if you, if you want to do any other things in here, feel free to play around. If you go look again at the getting started at the very bottom, there are a bunch of different links of further things that you can try out with cube apps. If you decided, however, though, at least for now, that you want to tear down cube apps, all you have to do is helm uninstall cube apps namespace cube apps and then this will uninstall it. Great, uninstalled. And here are the links again if you need to use any of them afterward. Thank you for watching this video on getting started with cube apps and feel free to ask me any questions or give me any feedback you may have. Thank you and have a good day.